Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilos, and this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube that guides you through every part of this game, our beloved Factorio game. And it is time to solve a big problem that I've been waiting a while to take, take a look at. So what, uh, let's say you have a mega base. This is my mega base and it's everything is built and everything should be working. But somehow, if you look at the production stats and look at the signs, there's an acute lack of something going on. Nothing is really going on. Now debugging a, master, a, a mega base is really kind of annoying because you have to check a lot of things and then figure out, trace it all the way back and figure out where the problem is. And on top of that, you would also be really nice if you knew what was about to run out before it actually run out. So you don't have the whole base stalling because of a simple thing that you, uh, you've underscaled. So how that is the problem that uh, I think anyone faces when they're building a mega base. And in this uh, masterclass, I will present a solution. The solution looks like this. This is my dashboard. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And you can do a lot of different things, but I will be explaining how to get, collect the data, how to display the data, what it displays and how to read it in this masterclass. So sit back, relax and uh, enjoy the ride. The first thing I should mention is that a dashboard like this, there are so many ways to make it. And this one is just my take on it. So if you want to do something else, if you don't like the way that I'm doing it, because your way is better, by all means, that's perfectly fine. But this is mainly for if you don't have a good way of doing it, you can do it this way. There are some preconditions that you need to, to have in order to do this, because the way that I'm monitoring materials is actually uh, is part of the design as well. So let's start by looking at how we collect the data in order to do this, because we need to collect some data in order to display it. Let's uh, look at the data collection first. What I'm going to monitor as the primary thing is how many train loads of a certain material I have available in the train system for pickup, because that gives me an idea and give me a representation of how much excess capacity. If I have zero train loads available, then I don't have enough of this particular material. So what I need to calculate is how much we have available. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So you can see a lot of circuits here, and that might be a bit confusing. If you are confused by this, then I have a separate, I don't think it's actually a masterclass. I think it's just an episode in a let's play called many to many train network. And in that I explain how this works. Maybe I should make a dedicated masterclass to that. If you want a dedicated masterclass to that, then uh, let me know in the comment section below. But the idea is that the, all of this calculates how many train loads are actually available at this point. And it will output it to the train station, which will then set the limit to that. So I already have the number of train loads here. You can see this one just switched to one X equal one coming in and L equal coming out. So what I need to do or what I am doing is saying, how many train loads do I have available? I take that in here. I take the train loads because this is an iron plate station. I may convert it into an iron plate. This one will then take one iron plate in and go into a global circuit network. This is one of the things that, well, I'm building with city blocks, surprise, surprise. And part of any given city block is that I have a green and a red light running everywhere. That means in a position like this, all I need to do is take my green line and put it into a, any any uh, city block power pole, and then I'll have the available anywhere. And you can see this, you can see uh, all on the green signal, how many of the various loads I have available. If for example, we want to go to the copper, here we are at the copper, we have three loads available. Actually, technically we have more than three loads, but I'm capping it at three loads because that's just the way I have designed the system. We currently actually have 230, which is way more than three loads, but that's uh, that's how I'm, I'm designing it. If I have three loads here, I know that I have plenty. So I have 15 loads, that's actually way more than 15. But what's more important is that I have one iron load and that's definitely the problem. So now you can see this is something you have to do for every single one. And if you do not have a green red circuit as a global network, well, that's kind of something you need because you need to transport the signals from all the places where you collect the data back into a collective location. And now we're back here at the dashboard. You can see the green signal here is coming in and going into the actual dashboard. And what I'm doing is quite simply each of these, I will explain how each of these work. And that will be uh, hopefully 
a bit more logical and it'll make a lot more sense. Uh, what you can see here, just at, an, at a glance, without knowing anything, the, if there are green bulbs, then it's probably good. If there's a single yellow bulb, it's probably not great. If there's a red bulb, it's probably bad. See, that's what you can read out of it without even without even knowing anything about what's going on. So I think that's already there. You can read it without understanding the logic behind it. And I think that's the point of a dashboard. You just look at it. If everything is green and is okay, if it's something is yellow, then you know, I might need to take a look at it. And if you have reds, you absolutely need to take a look at it. And uh, I couldn't do this masterclass earlier because I had to have a non-functional megabase. And now I have a non-functional megabase and that gives me lots of red indicators. Before diving into how I designed this dashboard, then we just take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who are supporting the channel. As you may have noticed, I don't have uh, ad integrations because I rely on the support from the community and it is wonderful that there are so many people who choose to support the work I do here. So thank you very much to all the Patreon supporters who are supporting the channel. There's of course no obligation, but if you feel like uh, supporting the work I do here, there is a link in to Patreon in the description below. Thank you very much. So the way this works is that uh, we take, we were just looking at iron and copper. So it goes in here. It takes the signal, which has everything. You can see the input signal over on the right hand side and the output signal is 2A. Basically we filter, just basically taking only this, the iron signal and then multiplying it by one and it comes out as an A signal. That means now the A signal goes, we're gonna skip the speaker just for now, come back to it. It goes into all of these bulbs. And these bulbs have a value of if A, the amount of trade loads available is equal to zero, then light up the red one, which is exactly what we have in this case. We have no signals with sulfuric acid and therefore that one is red. But in this case, we have one A equal one, now A equal one, and it's here. And uh, that means this is zero. This is greater than or equal to one greater than or equal to two. And what do you think the next one is? Greater than or equal to four, eight, and 16. Why do I do it in a uh, <laughs> in a power of two way? Well, because, because at some point you can look at the values here. I have 15 loads of, of copper and I can probably get more uh, later on. And it is, I want to display that in a way that I have plenty of those. And this means I have eight loads, that's plenty. Eight loads here, eight loads, great. Okay, I have somewhere between four and eight, that's good, four and eight. Uh, this one is two, two or three. And it just gives me a much cleaner way instead of having long lines or trying to make digital displays with digital numbers. This is perfectly fine for me. And instead of having it display all the way up, because I don't really care if it has nine or 11 loads or 13 loads even. It doesn't matter, it has enough. But I'd like to know if it's like fully stacked up at 16 plus, or if it's sort of this one is dropping down, it's actually because I don't have enough. And here, well, red circuits, they just fluctuate here between zero and one. So that's uh, that's the way I'm doing it. I, you can do it in any way you like, but I'm doing this with one greater than or equal to one, greater than or equal to two, four, eight, and 16. And I do that for everything. Now, a train load, for example, of rocket fuel is much less, that's 3,200, while a train load of red circuits is 64,000. So I don't discriminate between those things. This is a train load. This is only a matter of how many train loads, because if it's red, it's a problem. Doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter anything. It's just, if it's red, it's a problem. So that's what we, uh, what we need to look at here. That's, uh, that's the idea. You can see low density structures is a problem and the iron is starting to become less of a problem, but it's definitely still a problem. This one is just waiting for things to come in as well. Yeah, it's getting up to two, yay. So this, uh, the way that I've done it, the way I'm doing it displays here, you can see I have the green wire going this way, going from the A signal and transporting only the A signal in here. Then I have the colored signal going across, going vertical. And you can see from here, it goes in and ticks those two. And then of course, for these ones, I already ha also have the use color. I think that's a pretty neat way. You can do something, and I know someone's been suggesting it, like, okay, so if it's green, then all of it should be green. You can do that. It just needs a lot more, a lot more circuits for each one. I think it's three circuits you need for each row, and I don't really bother with that. I'm perfectly fine with this. I can just look at it and see if there's green, it's good. 
So that's one of the things that you can monitor in the base. That's the primary thing. And every time you add a new product, you can just add it here to the dashboard and figure out what to, what you have. Another thing that I'm monitoring on the dashboard that's also super important or not super. Yeah, well, it is super important. Um, can you just stop, stop killing my base while I'm doing tutorials? Right. This very, very simple thing is super simple. It just takes a full accumulator, goes in here. This will send a signal of 100 and then it will go in here to a programmable speaker. And basically this one will make noise, global cooldown, uh, alerts, all that stuff. If it goes below 90, that is a simple way because it is a mega base after all. And I have some power plants up here, but suddenly when all everything just starts coming online, you suddenly start running out of power. And then I get an, a warning here that I'm starting to use my accumulators and need to respond immediately with more power, like basically shut down science immediately. Uh, and the way that it works is I think the easiest way to do it is just by doing that. There. Now that's the noise that it makes. So you uh, there's no mistaking it. And it's going to continue until this value comes up to 90 and then it'll shut up. Please shut up. Please shut up. It's making too much noise and shut up. There we go. So this is super important, very small thing. Another thing that you can monitor that I have not monitored is, and I'm just going to show you how that would be done. This is a, a third dimension to it because right now I am monitoring the ore from all the ore patches. No, I'm actually, I'm monitoring the pat, the train loads at the ore patches. I'm, let's just go have a look at an ore patch here. This is exactly identical to what have we done before, basically taking here, how many train loads of copper ore do we have available Two here, three here, go into the network. Everyone's happy, but there is actually a potential for doing something additionally. And I'm just going to show you how that's done. If you want to do that as well, I don't really need it because I don't think I'm going to run out, but you can basically take from any one of the miners, go into a power pole. You don't actually need to go into a power pole, but uh, I'll just do it so we can see what we're actually monitoring here. You can see right now it's monitoring what is covered by this one. But if you click on it, this is one of those hidden things that not a lot of people know. You can do click entire patch and then it actually monitors the entire patch. And now it does not send the 58,000 outbound. It sends 30 million outbound. And in this case, you can do never do that. You can set a warning here that says if copper, if copper is oops, less than maybe 1 million, 1 million, then you display here and says copper and then whatever number that is, number one is low. And that will just be something you can have for everyone. And then when it drops below 1 million, you will get a notification that it's about to run out. At this point, I don't think they're going to be running out anytime soon. We're about 30 million for these kind of things. And with mining productivity 28, I honestly don't think they'll ever run out. That's why I haven't set it up, but that's a nice little extra warning to set up. Now we're back in the dashboard. I skipped the speaker before, but let's have a look at this one, how it is set up. This is monitoring again, value A, and then basically says when the value A is equal to zero, that means there are no trains loads available, then it will do a global playback, which is kind of not relevant, but since the volume is zero, but it will show an alert. Show alert is what you have down here. And then I just set the alert to, to what is needed. This icon here is what is displayed. The icon over here is what is displayed in the tooltip. So yeah, if you only display it here, then it'll only display the one blinking thing. And if you have multiple things running out, then it's not really great. So let's look at the plastic, for example, if I, did this one is low then you could see alert plastic is low but the icon here was still the same so and uh, i don't need it i just need to know what is running low that's all i need and that means at any given time this one should be a clean blank slate nothing there at all you can see oh, plastic just disappeared from the list why does it disappear yep, because we got one load so basically this means that it gives our the dashboard gives us two things. You can look at the stuff that's yellow and start fixing that before it goes red. Or you can, if you don't do that fast enough, you can look at the stuff that's red and know that things are not working or things are about to run out because you do not have enough of X. In our case, 
the red circuits are running out. The red circuits are running out because of lack of plastic. The plastic is running out because we had previously not enough coal and now we have enough coal, but we've run out of plastic and we need to upgrade our plastic production. Likewise, with uh, low density structures, this is simply not producing fast enough. The blue and the green circuits are running out because we had a shortage of iron and now it's going to take some time before the iron actually kicks up and starts uh, filling up so uh, if you run out of things in a megabase it's also going to take quite a while to get it back up again so it is incredibly valuable to to have this dashboard and use it for monitoring and just basically checking back at it and see what are the next things i need to fix and then start fixing those and then you can hopefully stay on top of your production during the creation of this one we have not been able to get our production up and running again and the reason why we haven't done that is because we still don't have the green and no it's actually the blue circuit so blue science is uh, stalling because of the lack of iron and therefore my focus should be more iron both have more iron mining more iron smelting so that we can feed all of the stations that need iron and there's a lot of stations needing iron and the one that's furthest away is unfortunately the blue science and therefore that's the one who's last on the list and therefore we need to make sure that we have adequate supply so all of these things you can read and decipher from the dashboard without going all the way over your map to every single outpost and every single location and i think that's absolutely wonderful i hope that this uh, tutorial has helped you with with uh, with the setup i, I do not really provide any blueprints for this should i provide a blueprint for this uh yeah i'll provide a blueprint i'll just provide a blueprint for this this part here and then you can implement it if you like. Of course, you have to remember that you need it on a green wire, everything coming in. So that's uh, that's one thing that you have to do yourself and collecting that data. So I hope it's useful. I hope that you, you find it useful. If you do, hit the like button. If you have uh, good ideas for other things to monitor in a dashboard, leave it in the comment below. If there are sufficiently many and good suggestions, then I will probably make a follow-up. Uh, and of course, if you have other ideas for future masterclass videos, then let me know and I'll be happy to make them. For now, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care and stay effective.